So you play games with your body. Whether you're in lockup in a car and you got to be someplace, you move it front and back like a singing little dolphin. It will bring it nice and safe. And, you know, the dynamics of the home. And so even coming, you know, home for me after a long day in practice, I carry everybody's stuff, right? Like we we work with a lot of people in pain and they're navigating big, heavy things. But I don't want to bring that home to my kids. Right now, wow, I'm alive. My little 22-month-old uh, grandbaby, she loves the word, wow-wee. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. I have a very, very special friend with me, someone I'm bringing back. You've seen podcasts with her. She has been at The Big Idea. I've gotten to facilitate a number of chiropractic workshops with this woman. She is, I call her my fairy godmother. And um, I'm sure if I asked her the title that she loves the most the, these days is Yaya. And she's going to bring that grandmother energy because she has, you mm. know, lived lifetimes in, in this life. And she has served countless people and teaches chiropractors literally all over the world. So I'm honored to have Dr. Katina Manning with us today. Thank you, Dr. Devin. And I thank God that he's brought people like you and so many other like-minded healers and leaders and women. Mm -hmm. in life. I'm so grateful for that because now coming into my like seventh decade of life, there's something really important you because people, um, the wise people drop off, the mm. heroes drop off, and it's their time to transition. So it's really important, and I so appreciate you taking this leadership role, mm. and and so many others. God bless you all. You know, I was looking back at some of the conversations we've had and, um, you know, a mutual friend of ours, Susan Rossi, was um, someone that I shared one of these conversations with. Um, and the podcast and these videos become almost like a time capsule, right? And so when I looked back and watched that conversation with her and the amount that she served into our hearts, and then it's our job to sing the song forward. And one day, you know, our children, our grandchildren, um, they take it and they run with it from here. So I feel like it is an opportunity for us to kind of capture the here and now as we're all rising and expanding and healing. And so I love the evolution of these conversations. And I have no doubt I, I chose my sparkly feathers and my smiley hat today, because if there was one word that I would choose that um, embodies who Katina is and the the gift really that she that she serves me every time I'm anywhere near her it is joy you just embody this joy and gratitude for life and for connection and love and um I would love for you to share like when it you know what what's the big idea that allows you to just you know, live with that type of light, serve with that type of light. And um, yeah, what do you, what's that one thing you wish that humanity knew, remembered and um, moved with in times such as this? Uh, I'm going to start with a little bit of science. Mm. So there's these two little eyeballs in your brain, mm. something called something like the bilateral cingulate cortex. To me, they look like little eyeballs along with your third eye. It's like, oh, we got that triad thing going of strength in the middle of your brain. Mm -hmm. And these two things that when you start prepping a meal, they light up. You start thinking about, oh, I'm prepping this for my family and they're going to love this. Boom, they light up some more. And then you share it. And then the things really light up. Call it lighting up our brain. Call it uh, re-nourishing ourselves. Allowing those little cingulate cortexes, um, oh, going through a challenge, really. They found that with older people who don't have all times or don't have all these things going on, what happens is when they uh, challenge themselves and they get through it and they keep existing in that exuberance of life and that gratitude, Gratitude brings joy. They sort of bleed into each other along with as you're bleeding out. And even when you're bleeding out, there's this gift of 
uh, gratitude that happens that you're not dead. And that gives you joy. And your body responds and the little cells that are bleeding out go, Whoop! we gotta hold this thing together. And your cingulate cortex is lying up in the middle of your brain and you get stronger and you live longer without diseases of autoimmune. Autoimmune, guess what that is? Auto, cell, immune. Uh, there's that repelling that has to happen, okay? There's too much dislike and dislove and and I don't even like the word H-A-T-E with each other. And on its on self, okay? yeah. this mm. kind, loving, wonderful, smart piece of equipment that we get to live in. Mm. And the energy that flows through it is superb. Mm -hmm. That gratitude, and I just watched a deer go by in the woods. <laughs> See, they're talking to us. We're connected to a source. We're mm -hmm. connected to an energy that flows through us. Mm -hmm. Our job is to use it, learn from it, play with it, uh, dance with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, receive the fruits of, the, of, of it. And so... This piece of equipment, your brain and your body and your nervous system, the communication system, and the energy that we do with it mm -hmm. are really um, can be very impactful. Mm. And it starts with taking care of your own house, which is this thing. Well, and you turn to it. I love that you brought the brain in. We're both chiropractors. We see the nervous system mm -hmm. and, you know, there's a lot of science to back up what, you know, a hundred years of conversations in our profession and others have talked about, but quite literally, I think you just summed it up. We're looking for ways that we can light up the brain and that doesn't always come in the happy thing. Sometimes it comes in the challenge, but it creates more wiring and we're stronger for it. Right. Yes. You yes. really are. And and you give a lot of exercises to your patients, to you know, different chiropractors to to use this. Cause it when it's just in an idea, um, that's one thing. But we want people to feel it, right? So if you're working with a patient and you want to teach them to utilize these gifts and to challenge them and light up, what are some things that you do with patients? to get them moving, to get those lights going off in the brain. Cause I know you're a master of movement and song and easy little things that any of us can do anytime that create this type of light in our body and our brain. So I tell them you are three corporations. Mm -hmm. You're a body, a mind, and a spirit. Okay. Number one spirit, you got to breathe. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we practice some breathing. There's a million wonderful techniques. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it like the t-shirt says. Mm -hmm. And what else fear? Oh, do I pray? Do I do I connect to my God however I connect? Walking prayer, your source. Um, so I actually take a piece of paper and I make three circles. And I say, um, how much energy are we putting into the body? Eh, not much. Be feeling pretty lousy. Okay. What are we putting into the mind? Oh, we've analyzed every disease and every this, that, and the other. And the thing is like this big and it's sucking all our energy. It's like the it's like the noisy kid in the in the room. That is not where we send our energy. We have to go either to spirit and, or go work our body. So get those two corporations strong. So got it. I teach them to um calm their mind. And then I get up and I move them. Now your body. Your body has some basic stuff. When you're embryologically not safe, do ever wonder what you cry like this? <laughs> or you're freaking out and you might be like that. The body in P to A movement is really important. If you had a box in a box, you'd go front and back, oh, and front and back and do it with your butt. You're driving in the car, sing music, driving in my car. Now get the other bump. I turn on the radio because I got to drive really far and I don't want my body to feel it too much. So, so you play games with your body, whether you're in lockup in a car and you got to be someplace, you move it front and back like a singing little dolphin. It will bring it nice and safe. And music is really important and drinking water. So your neurology, your most primitive part of your brain wants hydration wants compression, wants P to A movement. So you rocking back and forth. 
And this, this, I want to just, it, this is for kids too, right? So when you oh have, yes. and you're able to hold them and bring them into these movements and, and you brought up the compression. So a little drink of water and being able to rock them, it lights up that part of their brain mm -hmm. that brings them back into a state of safety yes. and calm and nurture. So simple, so simple, oh, so simple. It's amazing. And then we go to the next, like when you watch somebody walk, I make them walk forwards and backwards. If they sway, okay, they're in limbic brain, kind of emotional, ouch, that's painful. You should not do that, okay? Or like a kid, he talks to you like this, he's not safe and his limbic brain needs some work. So we get him a trampoline, get him the biggest one you can, let them jump and jump and say numbers and play those words and sing some songs, get their body moving of primitive brain, because they're going to have to uh, kind of go forward and backwards to get the up and down movement. Now you're combining pretty much two planes of movement. The brain lights up. It challenges. It has to figure it out through its body cells. And so moving it up and down, sitting kids in school all day is cruel. It's cruel. So... We rock in a rocking chair, we jump on a trampoline, we run backwards, we walk backwards, we close our eyes and walk backwards. We make believe if we were, if this is the only sense I had where all the other senses and um, play, where am I? And figure it out. If you were, if you lived a thousand, if you lived a hundred years ago, you would be running through the forest in the dark and you would hear everything mm. and you could do it. And you'd be turning your head and not tripping and, and not having to look down. Oh, well, and there's, there's a way to action these things and, and get it in the here and now, like you just said, I could stand up at my, say I'm at my desk for eight mm -hmm. hours a day. We can set that little reminder or just once per hour, get up and, you know, do some of our sways, jump up and down, do some of the, you know, the brushing that wakes up the brain. That's it. Just a little, yes. Some tapping these different pieces of movement um, neurologically change the state of our body, our mind, our focus. So that, and, and that can be with kids as well. So if there's teachers, if you're a homeschool parent and you know, you're, you, some of that simple jumping and rebounding people that are working from home, these are little itty bitty things that make big, big differences over the course of a week, over the course of a month, so that we're not stagnant and stuck in that stiff, you know, diseased mm -hmm. pattern. Yes. So simple. Yes. And the vibration and tone of the field that's emitting in from you out, because sometimes we're having it to be in some pretty tough fields, whether it's icky bosses or too much electromagnetism, whatever the inside source of peace and love and harmony within because the peace is within. So that breath of, and that connection and that truth that you claim mm -hmm. that I claim is what allows me to live it. Mm -hmm. And then that lightens up my field and it goes out and it creates like a little bubble of light. And it keeps it safe and calm. You end up being like the, the 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 lead dog in a tribe just because it's a very safe and grounding emittance. Yeah. It's peace well, and strength and safety. And Veda Austin, who um, has come to Big Idea, and I'm sure I'll get her over here to podcast. Um, she talks about the consciousness of water, right? And we are bodies of water. And she talks about, you know, the transmission and, and the science behind it of it's why a field can change with this type of vibration. So we literally become the light and then we spread the light by first charging our bodies of water, you know, our body uh, here with these things, these simple little things. And then we change every field we walk into and, you know, the dynamics of the home. And so even coming, you know, home for me after a long day in practice, I carry everybody's stuff, right? Like we, we work with a lot of people in pain and they're navigating big, heavy things, but I don't want to bring that home to my kids. So a couple of these like simple things to shake that out as I'm leaving the office or before I'm walking through the door of my home, 
then I change my field and then I bring a different energy, a different love, a different peace, a different calm instead of a rattled cage or a fatigue or a sadness that's not meant for my home, right? So we want to, we want to turn these from big ideas into simple steps that people can use because we are living in interesting times, right? There is a lot of chaos in the field that I think is going to birth a lot of light as we move forward, but we have to be aware of the EMFs of, you know, the tensions and the discords and the negativities and the depression, because it's all around us. And so we really do need to become masters. I would love for you also to speak a little bit about boundaries because, you know, yes, we can charge up our fields and yes, we can literally be the light, but we are human and we are, especially for feelers and mom, you know, moms, I think are just really susceptible to feeling all the feels around them. What are some things you do to help people with boundaries, having help, healthy boundaries to, you know, really hold on to that energy you're working to grow and heal? About 25 years ago, one of my shaman teachers taught me, um, Don Eagle Woman, to have me take out a piece of paper. At the top, you write, today I am grateful for. Boom, 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 quick. Put a circle on the page. Put you in the middle of this sacred circle. And then sit with yourself. Oh, I got to talk in front of people. I'm scared. I write scared on the outside. Oh, I'm going to be judged. I write that on the outside. Oh, I might. They're going to say I'm stupid. Oh, I write stupid on the outside. Um, nervous. I write that on the outside. I connect with whatever's going on in my field around me, the heavinesses, the little pieces of mud or or the thoughts actually, okay? Isn't the battle in the mind? Ta -da. So I use wisdom to guide me through and anchor me and secure me because I do not go out alone. I wake up in the morning, I smile and I say, thank you God, another day. And I keep connecting to my source. So the boundary circles, sitting with ourself, five minutes, five minutes, think like, okay, I got to, I got to pick up the kids, uh, timing, uh, on time is going to written on the inside, easy day is going to flow, oh, my child's soccer uh, thing, da, 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 whatever is important stays on the inside, what is a lie, okay, because you need to grab a hold of your lies and your demons and recognize them and tick, like a mosquito outside. Okay. It is not allowed in your field. Well, and in that action step, you know, writing it out, we've had you know, different workshops do this together and it's profound to watch people just get to, to declare it, right? These are the things I want to hold. These are the people I want. Here's the boundaries. Here's the things that are toxic because where there's light, there has to be dark, right? It's polarity. It's basic. And it's basic. But you said something too, that we're not alone. So if you, you picture that, that ring, that circle as angels, as God, as you know, um, those, there is a protective field around us. We just need to acknowledge it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think this morning type of prayer or end of day before you go to bed, because I'm sure you see this in your practice as well. I've got a lot of people who aren't sleeping well these days, more than ever. And, and they're not shutting down because they've got 15 tabs going in their brain. So this type of exercise of, you know, I'm going to put it all down and I'm going to let God hold the rest, right? Let him take those burdens from our shoulders mm -hmm. so that we don't so heavy and bogged down and running this machine literally till we're sick. Yes. Yes. And beating ourselves up because we didn't get it done. And I got to this and I got to that. And whoa, I got to got it means I'm in the future versus yeah. right now. Wow. I'm alive. My little 22 month old uh, grandbaby. She loves the word. Wow. We <laughs> <laughs> it's just that excitement of anything mm -hmm. and everything yeah. is pure. That's that's homework for everybody listening, watching with us today. Use the word wowie <laughs> as much as you can over the course of the next week and just see if your week is brighter. Every time you see a butterfly, every time you get a hug, every time a light goes green for you, little things. Wowie. I mean, and that's I think that's why you and I love you know working with kids and and chiropractic students so much because there's just 
you know, this, you know, evolution of the game of getting out of the past, getting out of the future and just being fully present and kids mm -hmm. are just in the moment and, and it can drive adults mad, you know, but, but it's there in wowie mode. And I think we could learn so much from that. So I, I love that little piece of homework. Katina, you know, I know that I'll bring you back and we're going to have you, you know, back in town for a big idea. Um, but I would love to uh, close this session in this because there's lots of little nuggets and we'll play in the, the notes. But as we're entering the fall, we're getting closer to election and a little more like tension building in the system before we experience this breakthrough. I would love for you to close us in a little prayer um, for for humanity, for mm. this, for collective peace and expansion and, and trust, right? That we are bravely entering new times and new potential. Um, but I would love for you to hold us all and we'll just, we'll kind of get the vision that we have anyone who's listening, watching and every life they touch and every life that they touch. And we see the ripple effect that comes from this one prayer. Take us there, my love. Oh, Heavenly Father, Son, Holy Spirit, from the deepest portions of my heart and the hearts of all your servants, we trust your voice of truth. We trust your ancestral spirit. We trust forgiveness. And we do expect miracles for you. Ask us to pray as if it is already done. We trust your awakening and your intervention and your purpose to lead us in your holy name. In your holy name, we go forth. We live in this moment. We forgive the past and we trust the future as we stand in your hands. Amen, Lord. Mm. Mm. Yes. And Boy, that's, hard to, that's hard to pray in front of a bunch of people because <laughs> it's such a private little thing. You know what I mean? It, it, it is. And, and yet I know for you and I, we, you know, the anchor is the A, above, down, inside out. Yes. And I, I think because it's so natural in our world, we underestimate how many people are walking around unanchored and who, you know, I, I sat with a mom the other day and she's like, I don't know how to pray. You know, she had been, she raised up in a family where um, really, you know, intense religious pressure took her away from God and she's finding her way back. But she's like, I just don't know how. And I, I know for you and your relationship with, you know, um, the nuns and, and, and God and, and church, like it's just in you, you couldn't turn it off if you tried because it's in you. And yet I think so many people are walking as if this life is all we've got, but when we pray and we expand and we see the bigness of eternal life, when we see the, the bigness of, of oneness and, the in, entire collective and we're just this little blip on a radar it lightens right the spirit it lightens the burden and so i appreciate your prayer i appreciate the joy that you exude and it's not something that you were just bopped on the head and gifted it's something that i know you cultivate daily in your reverence for god and your appreciation for this little bit of time that we get here on earth and with one another. So I appreciate your prayer and, and the embodiment that you are, I, I believe really shows us what we could each work on ourselves. So I'm so grateful for you and your time. And um, guys, I'll give you some links for Miss Katina. She does some cool retreats that you might want to be a part of. And like I said, we'll get her here, but that's the big idea for today. And um, you want to say goodbye? I've got my Miss Magnolia, perfect timing. You want to pop on up, wave at her. These two, this just, this like is the perfect close for the, for the podcast. Um, little Magnolia knew who I was on. The, she's sitting at my feet as we're recording this. So this is who it's for. Mm -hmm. I, I will say it. Thank you for joining us in this conversation with Big Idea. We'll see you next time.